Hello everyone, welcome again. So today's lesson will be on shipwrecks and salvage. And in the last lesson we looked at a prac about the corrosion rate of different metals. And in this lesson we're going to look at how to protect iron from rusting and actually use some of the things that we've studied um, in previous lessons and see if they actually do work in a lab environment. Okay. So our aim is to compare a variety of corrosion protection methods um, and see which one sort of works the best or if they don't work at all or if they do it work. So how are we going to do this? Well, what we need is a feroxyl indicator and it will become more obvious why we need that in the future um, as, I, as I show you the prac. But what that is is salt water containing phenylphthalein and potassium ferrocyanide. Okay? So this feroxyl indicator contains phenylphthalein, which we remember from acidic environment, and this new thing called potassium ferrocyanide. Okay? We need iron nails, we need a magnesium ribbon, copper wire, phosphoric acid, and a battery with some leads. Okay? So half fill petri dishes with the feroxyl indicator, set up a control nail to observe the regions which are anodic. So the regions that are anodic will obviously release Fe ions, right? So because at the anode, the iron is reducing, uh, is oxidizing, giving you Fe2 plus ions. Now, that feroxyl indicator will turn blue when Fe2 plus is, is present. So that's why we're using feroxyl indicator. So the indicator turns pink, however, where OH ions form due to the reduction of O2 and water. Okay? So when we produce OH minus, the feroxyl indicator will turn pink. Okay? So that's the cathode site. Okay? So the cathode will be pink, the anode will be blue, okay? if it's an iron nail. Okay? So blue is Fe2 plus is formed, pink is OH minus. So wind a piece of magnesium ribbon in a tight spiral around one nail. Repeat with the copper wire and another nail. Place each nail in a separate dish of indicator. Don't disturb. Connect two nails to a 1.5 volt battery using the clips and leads. And place the nails in the dish of indicator and observe any differences between the nails. And we can paint one nail with phosphoric acid and allow it to completely dry. Then place this nail in the, the feroxyl indicator and compare its corrosion with the control. So the control, this is what we're likely to see. Um, the reason why it's yellow is because it's in agar. I did this in university, we did a similar prac. Um, so we combined feroxyl indicator in agar to make sort of a solid, um, solid indicator, but anyway. Um, so this could just be feroxyl indicator, don't worry about the yellow so much. But as you can see, the ends and all these blue points, there's all these little blue dots, they're anodic sites and they're stress sites. So those are the sites that are most stressed in the iron nail. Okay? Now the center of the nail and the surrounding regions are cathodic and the indicator turned pink. So you can see the pink indicator there. right? That's because those sites are cathodic and they've turned the water and oxygen into OH-. So at the anode, this reaction is happening. That's why it's blue. And at the cathode, this reaction is happening, producing lots of OH minus, which is why it's pink. Okay. Now, if we look at the magnesium ribbon, you can see there's very little blue. Okay. And that's because the magnesium is protecting the iron now from rusting. Except right at the very end there, you can see because at the end. There's not the electrons can't quite get that far, so it's it's you know corroding a little bit at the end. So the magnesium acts as a sacrificial anode. So the magnesium goes from magnesium solid to magnesium ion plus two electrons. You can see that. Well, you can't see that, sorry, but that's what's happening. But at the cathode, those electrons are reducing the water to give you OH minus, and that's why you can see so much pink, because the magnesium is giving away electrons which are then reducing the water, giving you this OH minus, which is giving you that pink color. Okay? 
Now the copper ribbon, this is similar to the agar in the first, um, first one. So the copper should actually promote rusting. We actually would expect copper to promote the rusting because it's less reactive than iron. So the copper behaves as a cathode and forces the iron to be anodic. So you can see that the iron is clearly producing Fe2+, because you can see very dark blue regions at the nail ends. right? So it's uh, oxidizing to give electrons, and those electrons are going to the copper, which you can see in the middle. Now at the copper, it's reducing the oxygen and water to give you OH-, which is why you've got that pinkish hue right in the middle, and lots of blue regions on the outside. Okay? So you can actually see that the copper is promoting the oxidation of the iron. Okay? So if we would do the battery test now, so this would be with the battery, the nail connected to the negative pole of the battery should be protected from rusting, because that's what cathodic protection is, that um, impressed current system. So you can see the electrons would come out of this end and sit here and protect this well, black nail, OK? And then what that does is it causes the water to reduce, giving you OH-, which would make the pink color, right? However, the nail on the other side, because the, it's on the positive end, it will try to oxidize. And so you'll see lots of Fe2 plus ions, which will cause the feroxyl indicator to become blue, OK? So this side is protected from rusting, whereas this side is promoting rusting. Okay? So that feroxyl indicator is, will be blue when it's oxidizing. And on this side, because the water is reducing, it will produce pink. Okay? Lastly, the iron 3 phosphate on the surface of the painted nail should passivate the surface and prevent rusting compared with the control. So when we paint phosphoric acid onto the, um, onto the iron nail, what happens is it forms iron 3 phosphate which is insoluble and very inert. And so what we should notice is no reaction happening. So you won't see any pink or blue because it's not oxidizing or reducing at all. It's just not reacting. Okay. So that concludes our lesson on this particular prac. So testing different rust protection, corrosion protection um, methods. And so we've looked at each of them and what we expect to get out. Okay, so let's look at the question segment and see if we can answer questions based on this prac. So which statement correctly describes the outcome when, painted, when a painted iron structure is damaged? And by painted, I mean with just normal paint. Okay? So the iron will rust where the paint is damaged. The underlying will rust even where the paint is still covering it. There will be no rusting until nearly all the paint has been removed. Or the paint layer will spread to cover the damaged area. Okay, so it's not T or C. Um, D would be a crazy sort of alive paint, which doesn't quite make sense. And C, we know that that doesn't happen. It's between these two. So it's B. Un the underlying iron will rust even where the paint is still covering it if the paint is damaged. Okay? It will rust where it's damaged, as well as underneath, if we let it continue too much. So question 12, outline the disadvantages of paint as protection for ship's hulls. Okay, so why don't we want to use paint if we want to protect a ship's hull? Paint does not protect from, the, from rusting once the paint is scratched or damaged. Okay? Then the iron will rust where the damage is, and also the rust will spread under the existing paint. Paint also leaches chemicals into the water. Modern paints are improving these disadvantages. Okay, so modern paints are getting better, but not all of them. For a paint to be repaired, the ship must be dry docked, which is always bad. We don't want to take a ship out of the water, because that's a waste of money. So for painting ships, if we want to repair the ship, we have to take it out of the water and paint it again. And that costs a lot of money, which is a disadvantage. Okay? Compare and contrast the use of zinc and tin as coating metals for iron structures. So both metals can provide a physical barrier to protect iron from corrosion. Okay? That's what they're similar. That's how they're similar. And zinc provides additional protection if the coating is scratched or damaged. Since it has a higher oxidation potential, it will corrode preferentially to the iron, thereby protecting it. Tin has a lower oxidation potential, 
than iron, meaning that it will accelerate the corrosion process should damage occur to the coating. Okay, so if damage occurs, it could actually speed up the corrosion process because it has a lower oxidation potential. Okay. Explain why the phosphoric acid bathed nail exhibited much lower corrosion than the control nail okay, in this experiment. When iron is bathed in phosphoric acid, iron phosphate is formed at any anode sites. This iron phosphate adheres strongly to the iron and forms a protective layer around the iron, protecting it from future corrosion. So it essentially passivates the iron. Um, that's what the phosphoric acid does. Okay. How can the brass in how can the brass in the propeller accelerate the corrosion of the iron in the ship? Okay, so let's say in the old days we used to use brass as the propeller. How can that accelerate the corrosion of the iron? So brass is an alloy of copper. Now copper, if it's in electrical contact with the iron, forces the iron to become the anode of a galvanic cell, and we know that's bad. As soon as we know, as soon as we turn the iron into an anode, we're in trouble. This makes iron the the iron oxidized in the seawater. And this causes an increased rate of corrosion compared to if the propeller was also iron, because there would be no preferential oxidation. So that's why we don't want to use dissimilar metals too much in ships, because they can cause a lot of corrosion. Okay. So this concludes today's lesson on the first-hand investigation of different um, corrosion protection methods. We've looked at the results. We've looked at the different methods, and so hopefully this is re reminding you of the practice that you've done and will allow you to write about it if the question comes up in your HSC. So I'm looking forward to seeing you at our next lesson. Mm -hmm.